just Americans, but uh, all the folks part of the International Space Station to constantly be supporting our ability to, uh, to support uh, uh, continuous flight on board the space station. And that happened during some very sad, difficult times uh, in the recovery of uh, Columbia and trying to get back to return to flight. We still were able to keep humans on board, um, on board the space station for that continuous 10 years. A remarkable achievement for mankind and, and for the United States who's leading the ISS effort. In order to get the ISS, this pad was used a number of times uh, flying the shuttle to bring parts to the ISS and also to bring crews back and forth to the ISS. So Pad B has had quite the history. Before that, it was also used for Apollo and Skylab missions. So it has an unbelievable history. And we don't want to just end that history there. Last year we did uh, an Ares 1X launch right from this pad uh, about a year ago, a year and a couple days ago. And uh, we definitely used the uh, the lightning towers that day because the day of launch we actually had a lightning strike very close to the pad and because we had those towers we were able to uh, work through the analysis to try to go fly that day. So those towers are, ver are very helpful for the future. And that's where the history of Pad B ends today. Now where is it going to take us in the future? I think Jose talked a little bit about uh, how heavy lift, this pad can certainly be used for heavy lift. Commercial crew is a, is a program that uh, uh, Congress and the White House have all approved through the Authorization Act uh, just a few weeks ago. And it provides us a, a structure by which we're going to go partner with commercial companies in order to go bring crews in, into, uh, up to uh, low Earth orbit into the ISS. And you say, well, we kind of do that today. Our program today also uses contractors, industry, in order to build the vehicle in order to work with the vehicle, in order to get the vehicle on orbit, in order to keep the vehicle flying safe and get the vehicle home, in order to process the vehicle for another flight. So what we did today on the shuttle program just over at Pad A is not that different than what we're going to go do tomorrow. The difference is, is we're going to look for investments both from the government side as well as from the commercial side as well as from industry. Why go do that? Because today all the stuff done on the shuttle is really done for the government. What we like to do and what the, the government would like to do is spur a new capability to go into low earth orbit and do other things other than just move NASA crews back and forth to the International Space Station. In order to go do that, it makes sense for the taxpayer not to have to pay the whole bill for the development. It makes more of a sense that we invest together to go make that happen so that as time goes on, we get our missions to the International Space Station, which we'll need to continue to do and any other NASA mission that comes up that uh, this crew com uh, commercial crew capability can be used for. But also it spurs an, an entire industry of trying to get access to low Earth orbit. Access for people to get to a low Earth orbit to go do other things other than the International Space Station. Someday there might be other space stations uh, up on orbit and we hope to have vehicles that will get us to low Earth orbit to go to those destinations. Now, I'm not speaking of that as a NASA person, I'm speaking of that as, as an American who would like to have more capability to do more things in space other, other than just the ISS. So NASA being, you can look at it as the anchor tenant, as you would look at a mall or something like that, has to go put together what does it take to go develop the capability, work with our partners to develop the capability, make sure the capability is safe enough to put our crew on board and get our crew to ISS, and then from that, we can spur other business to go do other things in low Earth orbit. It's similar, similar to how the early days of uh, post, uh, the uh, U.S. Postal Service worked with airmail. That was fully a government organization flying government planes with government pilots doing government work to move mail from one point to the other. Over time, that was not cost effective to do it that way. And within about five or ten years, an entire U.S. air mail system came about where there was contracts being let by the government to go move mail by commercial vehicles to go do that from one coast to the other coast. And you can say, well, that was, there was already people living in those coasts, so there was, a, there was a market there. In this particular case, for commercial crew, I think the market is not just moving people up and down. That is the reason why we need this, a, a spaceship and a system. But it's to go do research, research for medicines, research for materials. Uh, research uh, for global environments. All those things can be done with people on board any system that we can put up to low Earth orbit.
That's the whole purpose behind Commercial Crew. What we're doing over the next year or so in Commercial Crew is to continue to spur uh, that development and that early conceptual and preliminary design efforts that have to go on in order to bring a system to fruition to go fly a particular mission to get the uh, low Earth orbit. Uh, NASA uh, has been uh, putting together what we call a Commercial Crew Development One, which is ongoing right now and should be ending about the end of this year, early next year. We hope to continue that with a what we call a Commercial Crew Development Two, which is a continuation of what we've learned from Commercial Crew Development One, or CC Dev as we call it for short, from the first phase into the second phase. And during the second phase, we hope to look more at what does it take to put together a complete system to go fly from the surface up to a, a low Earth orbit capability and bring, and bring it back and bring back our crew safely to go do that. We've just put that out. We'll see how that goes over the next number of months. And we hope to award that sometime next year in which we can hope to continue with that development. The next phase is really the phase that is the hardcore development and design and development phase. That is where the rubber meets the road. That's where you make the design decisions, development decisions. It's where you do your certification testing and your qualification testing. That is the hard part. That is very much the hard part. That's going to start after we get done with this commercial crew development two phase. That'll be what we call our design and development phase. Of course, it needs continuing congressional and White House approval to go do that. That is NASA's plans. Um, and as we get that approval, then we'll continue to move that forward. And then comes what I would look at as the next phase, which is really the demonstration phase. You now have a complete vehicle. You have a, a spacecraft that you're going to use. You have a launch vehicle you're going to use. You're going to figure out how to go launch that vehicle, process that vehicle, whether it's from Kennedy Space Center or not. You still got to put all that together. And then you're going to go probably demonstrate that system end to end and get that vehicle up very much like uh, the COTS program today, which is car uh, cargo uh, orbital uh, transportation system. Uh, they are doing some demonstrations today with their contractors over the next uh, six months to a year. Uh, we will enter that phase, and that phase will go for a little while, depending on how much we need to demonstrate before we go put people on board. And then we'll put people on board that vehicle because we now certified that vehicle for NASA standards, for NASA certification, for the commercial crew program standards, um, in which we'll be rolling those out and talking those within the industry. Once those are out, the design has got to meet those requirements in order to go put our crew on board. Because we believe that's the minimum set you need to go fly a mission safely and bring the crew back safely home again. Uh, and then we'll enter the final phase, which is actually services. Once all that is done, then NASA, like anybody else, can go buy a service from that particular uh, provider, that particular commercial entity, to say, we would like to move our crew, our four astronauts, every six months, every four months, we're still debating all that out. Uh, we can move our crew every so often to the International Space Station, and we'll buy a service to do that. Just very similar, um, similar to what we hope will happen, like when you go buy an airplane ticket. You need an airplane ticket to ride, we're looking for a spaceship to go ride. Now, in order to go do that, we got to make sure that the spaceships are going to be safe and reliable and cost-effective in order to get our crew to the International Space Station. By doing that, we believe that we will spur other businesses, other markets, to go do other things in outer and low Earth orbit. Now, that's the whole concept. And when I was talking to some folks the other day, and I said, can I put that in some type of term? Well, I like football. So I'll look at what we're doing in the Commercial Crew Development 2 series as really the preseason. It's how do we get ready? How do we go think about things? How does the commercial provider, what are they thinking? Uh, how are they making their plays, if you want to call it that? And then you have the regular season, which is our design and development. That is the hardcore regular season. And then you can look at, then you have the playoffs. And the playoffs is the demonstration phase. Demonstration phase is you're in it for go. You have no second chances. You got to do it right the first time. And that's what the demonstration phase is. It's to go learn what it takes to be certified in a complete end-to-end -end system. Of course, then you have your Super Bowl, which is trying to get trying to get services. I look at it as a football analogy as to how we're going today to how we hope to be in about three to five years from now. I think that's all I have about commercial crew. I'll answer or I'll let uh, Andrea figure out what happens next. Okay. <laughs>
Um, now we'll take questions. What I'm, I'd like to do is, because there's so many of you, I'd like Jose to come up here with Ed. Any of the photographers that wanted to take some photos, please yeah. go with Jennifer. She's raising I'll her hand. I'll take you up to the fence line if you want to take, and oh, we'll go on this cross.